Hello, it's the Happy Satellite Nerd here, also known as Mr. Strike, or Weird Walter. So I'd like to show today the Amico A3 satellite receiver and its ports. So here is the LMB in. It doesn't have a loop out, but you can get a splitter to split it. There's your ethernet, there's a recovery button, a CA slot, a micro SD slot, an HDMI output, a USB micro mini the cell phone one same thing it's attached to the the, uh, the Amico remote SPDIF which is the optical output a USB port and an output one thing that disappoints me about the Amico A3 it only has an HDMI video output so it doesn't have a analog output like the Amico Mini, which would be a great feature, especially if it ever had a problem with the HDMI, like my open box, or at least my open box has analog video output. And it also has the spot in the bottom where the hard drive goes. I'm gonna go through the pros and the cons of this box. And uh, we're going to hook it up to this satellite dish here. Maybe that one over there. There's a couple of them back there we'll hook them up to through a disc queue switch. The Amico receiver does have DVB-S2, 8PSK, and QPSK capabilities. I'll review, give you my opinion of this box, whether or not you should get this box or not. This is the Wi-Fi remote. It has really cool features. It has You charge it with the USB connection here you got a headphone jack right there it's got a little microphone button you press on it you can talk into it and do Google searches with it um, it has a lot of neat features but also I find it crashes a lot sometimes I like to call this the Amico a3 reboot because I tend to have to unplug it and plug it back in a lot all right one thing I found with the Amico the one I have it does crash a lot there's not really a reboot button so what I do is I just have the power supply here and I just plug it in when I need to reboot it so in this case there we go and you should see the Amico start to boot up which is something I find is a common thing that I have to do with this I don't know if it's overheating because of the hard drive but it tends to do that while booting um, another thing while booting I find is I have to um, have it on the HDMI channel that I'm using in order for it to boot up. There's the boot screen there because if I just turn it on and it's not the TV's not on, the video doesn't send, tend to work well. So that's some flaw I've noticed with various firmwares. It's done the same thing. So for the channel t uh, surfing test, which I'm just going to go through channels. Um, it has, a, once again, this receiver has a bit of a delay, not as slow as the uh, Asbox, but still it's a little bit slow. Sometimes there's some glitchiness in the menu I've noticed. Like there's just a little bit of blurriness like between when shifting and, uh, and going into the menu. So I've seen that at times. Um, like when I hit the, okay, when I'm in the, let's go back into the TV here, TV mode, I hit the okay button and I get that little bit of glitchiness in the menu when I switch back and forth. So everything tends to load up. So the remote just has this button here, which you can use to turn on and off. If you end up leaving it on, it might run, the battery might run, um, run out. So... Here's the EPG, um, well, there is an EPG at this time for this box, from what I know. Uh, there was, where I bought this from, uh, the, the retailer did have a service uh, while well, selling it that it had uh, an EPG service, which did work for a while. Um, as far as I know right now, there's I can't really do anything. So for free to air, the best, one of the best things to do is just... Uh, Go to titantv.com, I think it is, and um, I, I just make a schedule list of the free to air channels. They don't actually have a free to air channel, so that would be something cool if they had that. 
So right now it's it's cool, so it's it's running it's running um, pretty well. I don't have any um, PyCon pictures running for the background. I haven't set it up uh, for that. So you can hear a little clicks in the remote here as I'm changing channels. So sometimes when you hit it, it goes to black for a second, and then it, it comes uh, it comes back. So if we hit the info button, let's go info and then the red button. You know, info, info button, info button again. You get the the signal strength, and you can get the stats of the video. So to get to the menu, you just have to press the middle OK button, which makes it go to black for a second, and then the picture will come up. And if you hit the red button, you can go to the satellite that you want to go to, or your favorites list. So I can like go to very all, all the different satellites I have set up on this thing. Or when you're in this, and then when you're in this menu, when you're in uh, your TV menu, then you hit the other menu and you can go to your advanced install. That's where you can do your blind scan for channels. So the blind scan is one thing where I've had an issue uh, with this before, where if I do a blind scan on and the mode for FTA, and I'm just gonna scan 97 West, so I'll show this barometer, or this graph, and I'll go through the transponders. But I have found at times, and I think it's doing it now, where it's just frozen. And it, uh, oh, it's doing it, okay, good. But I've I found that's one of the defects of the, of this, um, it could be the firmware version. Sometimes it will work on some satellites, and then other satellites, when I try to do a blind scan, it just crashes, and then I end up having to reboot the box. So that's another complaint I have about the Amoco A3, and that could be a firmware um, issue uh, with mine. So I'll continue scanning. So this is just a scan of 97 West, all the channels that will scan in uh, while doing a blind scan with the Amoco A3 satellite receiver and sometimes it does stay like it just stayed there at seven percent it'll stay there for a minute or two but then it'll it'll move on up so it's kind of cool that it shows the spectrum analyzer uh over the frequencies it just as i said it crashed it's crashed before another thing i like to say is it if you have the spark app you can use the spark uh remote spark as your remote um, or you can even stream to any Android device, which I've shown in my uh, review of my $40 RCA Walmart tablet, where you can take, where you can uh, watch uh, um, TV on on that. So I'm not sure if it's up today or not, but uh, I was able to get NASA on my last review, and then it went away for a while. But I don't, not sure if it's just because there was a lot of overcast. On my uh, on my um, where my dish was because I'm not using that big dish, I'm just using a very small subscription dish. So I don't think I've done a blind scan on this receiver in quite some time too. So there's a lot of newer channels. Do I want to download PyCom? Okay, and it doesn't really do anything. It just sort of goes through this quickly, and I can say no to that, but I'm just showing you that. Uh, this particular receiver doesn't really do anything when it comes to that. So, so here, here it on the this channel is not available at this time. So anyway, it's uh, so just to go through the scrolling feature, I can go through all the channels. If I hold the remote and sort of scroll, like kind of like the old i uh, the old uh, iPod thing, just go around it in a circle, and it'll go all the way down through your channels. As you can see on Galaxy 19, there is a lot of channels to choose from. Many foreign language channels and just to quickly go through all that. There's 273 according to this receiver. 
on Galaxy 97 West. Galaxy 1997 West. Now, if I were to press the home button, which would take me to the apps, and I think it is connected to the internet, which is good. I think it's connected to via Wi-Fi at this time. Oh yeah, because I don't think it's connected. Uh, I don't know, I use the Wi-Fi. anyway. <laughs> and it had a program called Cross EPG, which is an uh, EPG program, but it's not working at this time. I can connect it to my HD home run for my local public library. I can use Hoopla for free digital media. There, you can use the Play Store with this. It is an Android, full Android operating system app, so you can use that. Uh, there's Web TV. I've never, I don't think that really works all that much. VLC. And there's XBMC, uh, which it's still using XBMC. I don't know if there's a Kodi app for yet. There's a Spark App Store, but I usually just go with the Google Play Store stuff. I don't put a lot of apps on this, but the ones I do use, it's just uh, mainly for that stuff. I did have Netflix on here, and Netflix does work on this, I think. But recently, I had to reinstall. I, good thing you saved, I saved a backup. All right, so it's always important to, if you get one of these, is to back up. I, what happened to mine recently is I had to restore. So I restored two uh, settings I had from a, a, quite a while ago. So the current firmware I have is 2.0.78. And uh, I don't know, I just found this version, I've had other versions, and I found it's been a little bit more crashier with this version of firmware. So an important feature of this is your PVR. So to get to your PVR, you go to the media. After you've recorded something, you'll find your recordings under record. And you can click on that, and you can go through all of your recordings that you have made. So I haven't recorded anything in a, in a while here, but uh, my hard drive, the hard drive on this is getting a little bit full, which I need to delete a bunch of the stuff because I've already seen it, but I'm a, kind of a pig for not always uh, clearing it out. It'll show the drive that you want to do. Even though it's an Android uh, Linux kernel system, it calls the drive C and A drive. And as you see the little, I'm putting my finger over the mouse button, you can see the mouse kind of scrolling over the display and I can look at photos go through music and videos now just uh, I'll cut this if it's not uh, anything I want to show but the home video player on this this is how you know quick it is to play a video kind of lags a little bit so when you go to connect it to the internet you can use Wi-Fi it does have Wi-Fi built into it or you can connect it via LAN for whatever reason, I've tried with LAN and with uh, Wi-Fi, and my HD Home Run, it just runs it really slowly. Although, of course, my local channel is um, has no um, sub channels, so it's a very big file. Maybe I could stick a smaller channel, and that's the standard definition channel, just to see if it will work. So we'll play through VLC with the Spark app uh, just once. And we'll see if we'll load up with VLC. Okay. So it is playing that uh, with the HD Home Run. So with my HD Home Run, I can see the signal strength. So say if I go to channel seven, Maybe let's just say it's a hot day today, so maybe it's just coming in WSRY out of Syracuse. There we go. That's the channel's a little further away, so so just to show that it's um, the signal quality is a little bit in yellow, but it is usually watchable, although it's dropping out there. Dep and that all depends on the tuner, and although the HD home run is pretty good with weak signals. Uh, where is PBS on this thing? Oh, it's way down here. So, 
I'll try it over on PBS2, which is the Create channel on my local. Oh, and it's coming in really good. So I'll just do a quick click on that and have it load up in VLC just once. If I go with always, it tends to, doesn't like that too much. So I just say all oh, just once and let it choose. All right. So it looks like the HD Home Run is working on this, uh, on it. It looks a little choppy to me, but uh, it is working. So is the Amico A3 worth getting or not? It's up to you. I, I just wanted to point out some of the problems I've had with mine. Um, in some ways I've used it and if I'm not channel surfing, um, it's worked fine. But with channel surfing, I've had some issues um, while using the Spark app. It's crashed on me while using that. I do love the fact that I can use the Spark app and um, go out to my satellite dish, tune my dish, and just look at the meter on my phone, which I've had to do at times. That's an awesome feature. Uh, I can watch video on my phone with it, or on a tablet, or on a Linux computer. Uh, the last flaw I've experienced with it is I had it not, it was just uh, crashing and staying in boot. So that, uh, I was able to get recover it in recovery mode something went wrong in the memory uh, hopefully the receiver is not kaput it's been working for a while ever since and hopefully I won't have to do that again but I have had to do that two times so far so that's one thing that I've had problems with this who knows how much longer the, the receiver will work